Knee pain is a common frustration of many cyclists and one that can often be eliminated with a proper bike fit and correct pedal setup. And a question we often get asked at GCN is, do I need float in my pedals? Well, today is your lucky day. I'm going to answer that and more. We're going to look at how float in cleats affects, well, knee pain and also how it compares to fixed cleats with no float. And I'm going to do this with the help of Phil Burt, who's a physiotherapist and bike fitting guru who has over 12 years experience working with British Cycling across Olympic cycles and Team Sky. Before we go any further, I need to explain what float in pedals is. Now float is a feature of clipless pedals such as this and there are many different types of pedal and cleat system available but more on that in a sec. Floating cleats were developed to allow a small degree of sideways rotational movement of the foot when clipped into the pedal. This movement normally allows the heel to move towards or away from the bike. The thinking is that this allows the foot and in theory your knees to center themselves during the pedal stroke. Look and Shimano pedals do this by way of different cleats which offer different amounts of float. So for example, Look has a red cleat which offers nine degrees of float and a gray one which affords 4.5 degrees of float. Shimano has a center floating yellow cleat which offers six degrees of float and pivots at both the toe and the heel, a blue cleat which pivots just at the toe and a fixed red cleat which offers no float. Wahoo Speedplay cleats are a bit different in that the amount of float you have is adjusted on the cleat itself. So if you remove the aero cleat cover I've got on here, you can then see you have these two grub screws and they're clearly marked heel uh, out and heel in. And from here, you can take a Phillips screwdriver and by adjusting these scrub screws, you can adjust the amount of float you have up to, well, from zero to 15 degrees. So a lot of float. Now, a key advantage of float is that when you're attaching your cleats onto your shoes, the exact placement of the cleats is less critical. And if you get it wrong slightly, it's less likely to result in injury through incorrect alignment of your feet and knees. And this is because the float can correct for it slightly. But to find out more about this, I decided to speak to Phil. So let's hear what he had to say. Hi, Phil. Good to see you again. Hi, Ollie. Good to see you too. I mean, the first question I've got, big question, does float stop knee pain? Uh, it can do, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you think about it, I often say to people that we, we, we kind of walk on bikes, we don't pedal. Yeah, we take the mechanics of the way we uh, walk and we put that onto a bike. And obviously, um, cycling imposes this postural um, um, input on us. So you're in a sustained position for a long period of time. And when you're pedaling, you're in that, that uh, 90 revolutions per minute. If, if, for example, you walk and you turn your toes out and heels in, you know, so walk like, that's a bit of very much more duck-like. Um, and then you put that onto a bike and you fix it and don't allow that to happen. Um, it tends to be cause, uh, can cause knee pain because basically the knee joint isn't, um, has to absorb all the movement that normally will occur lower down, yeah, with your foot and, uh, and your ankle and turn your lower limb out. And all of a sudden, all that pressure it has to go somewhere and uh, those forces have to be resolved at the knee. So that can cause knee pain, yeah. So different pedal systems offer different amounts of float. And are there instances where some people don't have enough float and they're, they're able to resolve issues they have you know, when when going to a system that has even more float, is is that something that you've you've seen? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people get fixed on maybe having a fixed pedal system because they think that transfers more power into the pedal. You know, so float robs you of power. But you could, in, in some cases, that you can you could definitely make that stand up and would be more. Yeah, you know, but I would argue that being able to put your foot exactly where you want to 
probably be it produces even more power you know so if you imagine if you took me and you into a gym and, and we started doing squat squats so i wouldn't put my feet in the same place as you you know so that's where sometimes i think float allows you to realize that position the beauty the problem is though often people will jump on a speed plane and it feels like you're pedaling on an ice cube because it's just so much float in there i think what people sometimes forget to do is like with something like speed play you can dial off the float that you don't want and keep the one that you do want so for example if we're looking at the hands here you know we want to be say point towards between 10 and 12 o'clock like this and allowing our heels to come in we can, we can dial off all the other stuff from the outside and that can feel fairly you know rigid and locked in you know so and, and feel stronger to transfer the power so it's having the float where you want it and, and, and sometimes with a yeah, Shimano look and you're choosing either yeah, a, a, a yellow or a blue cleat with different amount of float you, the only problem with those ones is you have to set it up on, on the shoe in the right place to allow that float where you want it, you know? And yeah. you've worked with a huge number of, of top elite athletes, you know, through yeah. through Team Sky and British Cycling. And I've seen a lot of, of top, top sprinters in particular mm. um, and a lot of elite riders, such as Mark Cavendish, use the fixed cleat mm. with no float. Mm. Now... Is there an advantage to that? Why are they using it? You know, is there better power transfer? Uh, you'd imagine from a biomechanical physics principle, if you've got no float, then everything that you're pushing into the pedal is going, you know, in, in, into that pedal system is going to get transferred to the pedal. But I think that's a bit of a... Um, uh, the main reason I think a lot of sprinters use fixed cleats is because they don't want to pull out, actually. And float obviously allows that momentum to disengage the pedal. It, some sprinters will like, will want to feel that locked in feeling, but I think part of that then is not, not you know, they, they hate being pulling out, you know, when they're going full, for, after all that work, getting towards the end, the last thing you want to do is pull your pedal out. And having a fixed pedal is probably feels like it's less going to do that. So if someone has knee pain, yeah. a lot of the time people will then go, right, oh, I need to sort out my cleats or the or the, the float in them or increase the float or whatever. Mm. Is that like a sensible course of action in your mind or should they be looking at potential other things first that could be causing the knee pain? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't think you should jump into float straight away. Uh, again, it, it, individuals or di everybody's different, but um, I think most common cause of knee pain is sitting too low in my opinion you know that normally will result in knee pain so you can look at resolving your saddle height you know and um, sitting too low compresses up the, the patellofemoral joint your, your kneecap and that can be a really common cause of knee pain um, so looking at your saddle height first of all um, the second thing would be um, looking making sure that your knee isn't too far forward of your foot in your pedaling style you know so often we talk that's a measure a lot of people we look at the old plumb line measure where you get to nine o'clock in the pedal cycle, making sure that your kneecap's not in front of your knee. A real easy tip with that is just shoving your cleats all the way back moves your foot forward in the shoe. So it's counterintuitive, but you move the cleat backwards, it means the foot goes forward in the pedal cycle. Pedal cycle. That's so resolves so many people's knee pain and it, it's akin to the saying going into a gym and me and you doing loads of lunges you know you wouldn't lunge miles further forward than your foot would you and not expect to maybe get some knee discomfort and that's what some people know but so cleats backwards but the other thing is just making sure that your saddle setback isn't too far forward you know so i often jump on my watt bike at the top of the garden there and my missus has been I, and i forget to change the saddle setback and we're about five minutes like well my knees are too <laughs> yeah but yeah no thanks uh thanks for your time phil thanks for telling us um sort of all about about float and um yeah i'll uh well please chat to you chat to you again soon thanks ollie take care so conclusion time do you need float in your cleats well for the vast majority of riders a small amount of float is going to be beneficial and the positives of injury prevention are going to far outweigh the sort of slight perceived loss in efficiency or power transfer when sprinting and as phil says cycling is an excellent activity for your knees it's often prescribed in rehabilitation from knee injuries in other sports but if you are having issues with your knees and experiencing knee pain even when you've tried using float in your cleats and getting your, your saddle uh, uh, height correct then it's probably worth consulting an expert bike fitter to try and get things on the right track now i hope you found this video useful and informative and if you have give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more like this and let us know your comments in the comment section down below i'll see you in the next one cheers bye